The events unfold in the year 1864 in Virginia. A girl is gathering mushrooms in the forest when she suddenly comes across a wounded man who asks for help. The girl said that there's a girl's boarding house nearby, run by Martha Farnsworth. Besides her, there are only the teacher Edwina Morrow and five of her students left there. The rest have left due to the Civil War. The man realizes that those women are unlikely to welcome him, but he has no other choice. The girl's name is Amelia McBee. The man introduced himself as Corporal John McBurney. He had been at war but received a serious injury. As Amelia helps her new acquaintance walk, she explains that she is also a student at the boarding house. Meanwhile, Edwina Morrow is teaching the students how to read and write. Alicia is clearly bored during the lesson. Martha Farnsworth and Marie are working in the garden when they suddenly hear Amelia calling for help. Martha and Mary rush to her and find an unconscious soldier nearby. Martha ordered the corporal to be carried into the house. John, in a semi-conscious state, was delirious. The girls realize that John is a northerner and put him on the floor. Many consider it a bad idea to keep the soldier here since he's an enemy. But Amelia objects, saying they should do the Christian thing. Martha decided that they would help the soldier and when he got stronger, they would report him to the patrol. Soon it becomes clear that John's wounds are much more serious than initially thought. If the women had left him in the forest, he would have perished. Martha cleans and stitches his wound, with Edwina assisting her. The curious students gather at the door, trying to eavesdrop on the conversation. When Martha and Edwina had finished, they told the girls to show restraint and strictly forbade them to enter that room. Now it was time for the sewing lesson. Everyone except Amelia fears John and believes she made a mistake bringing him here. But Martha is sure that the soldier is not a danger. Later, Martha tends to John's wounds again and tidies him up. While doing so, she feels ashamed. The girls continue their sewing, while Martha can't calm down. The appearance of a man has excited her. Suddenly a signal sounds, bringing John to his senses. The girls knew it was soldiers walking by, leading the captured Northmen. They wanted to greet them, but Martha forbade it and went out to talk to the captain herself. However, she doesn't mention the northerner in their boarding house and asks the captain for some ammunition. He doesn't refuse her request. The girls watch from the window and realize that Martha didn't give away the northerner. In the meantime, she loads her father's revolver and locks it in a drawer. Later, Martha finds Amelia in the room where John is, and immediately takes her away. Before sleeping, the girls recite an evening prayer. Edwina asks the Lord to grant recovery to the wounded soldier. The girls want him to get better and leave them. In the morning, Amelia visits John, who is conscious. It was curiosity that brought her here. Breakfast at the boarding house is meager, but there's at least some food. Many families are starving now. Jane is displeased that the soldier has taken over the music room. Music lessons had to be postponed. Edwina asked Jane to stop her outrage. Martha entered the kitchen. She understood that the students were impressed by their guest. And that was true. The curious girls often spend time by his door. Martha tries to stop it. The corporal understood that Martha is a very straightforward and strict woman. She made it clear to the soldier that he is an unwelcome guest. Despite everything, John is very grateful to her, as she didn't turn him into the patrol. Their conversation was interrupted by a knock on the door. Alicia entered and asked if she could help with something. Martha said sternly that there was no need. John assured that he can be trusted. However, Martha is not so naive and understands well that this soldier might be dangerous. During the day, Edwina as usual teaches the girls literacy. After lessons, they work in the garden to sustain themselves. Alicia works without enthusiasm. Marie brought John a prayer book, thinking that he should confess. As Marie left the room, Edwina noticed that the girl had taken her pearl earrings without permission. Marie justified herself by saying that everyone dressed up today, including the teacher. John called out to Edwina, asking her to stay with him. She brought him soap, as he had requested. Edwina, like the others, understands that John is a deserter who ran away from the battlefield. But John believes he acted wisely because, unlike his comrades, he survived and met Edwina. The woman could barely contain her embarrassment. She was pleased to hear compliments from John. Edwina doesn't have a husband she's waiting for from the war. At one point, John told Edwina that she doesn't belong here, just like him. John suggested that Edwina run away together and took her hand. Edwina doesn't hide that she wants to leave here forever, but it's not possible for now. Before sleeping, the girls as usual prayed. At one point, Alicia whispered to Martha for permission to leave. No one suspected she went into John's room. Alicia kissed him, wishing him good night, and left. After that, Alicia rejoined the prayer. The next day during the break, the girls were fooling around. Suddenly shots were heard in the distance. The fighting was getting closer to the boarding house. Even in the evening, the gunfire didn't cease, but Amelia is thinking about something else now. She's happy that Corporal McBurney gave her a button from his uniform. 
During dinner, Martha decided to discuss the unexpected appearance of the corporal in their house. In her opinion, the girls shouldn't be distracted from their studies and their duty. Martha was surprised when Edwina began speaking about John tenderly. The woman was clearly in love with him. After dinner, Martha, Edwina and the girls visited John for the evening prayer. They also decided to liven up his boredom with music and singing. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. Everyone feared it might be enemy soldiers. Telling Edwina and the students to stay on the second floor, Martha went downstairs and opened the door. They were soldiers, but not enemies. Later, Martha returned to the room and said she had invited the soldiers to the kitchen and fed them. They are here to see if anyone needs help because the army is leaving. Martha plans to turn the corporal over to the soldiers, but Edwina and the girls plead with her not to do so, as in that case John would end up in prison at best. Martha decided to show Christian mercy and allowed John to stay until his wound heals. John felt relieved. After sending the students to their rooms, Martha offered him brandy. He of course agreed. Before sleeping, the girls talk about John. Each of them wants to get his attention. Meanwhile, John and Martha were having a drink. John admires Martha's resilience in taking care of her students. Martha admitted that she's very tired. John started asking personal questions. Martha said she lost her husband in the war. Soon John was able to stand. Now despite his limp, he can walk, but only with a crutch. Each of the girls wants to take a walk with the corporal in the garden. Martha stops this outrage. John is still weak, but he doesn't intend to sit idle, so he volunteered to work in the garden. At one point, he noticed Edwina but didn't call out to her. Throughout the day, John worked. Edwina couldn't take her eyes off him. Amelia brought water to John and wanted to keep him company. John secretly told Amelia that he considers her his best friend in this house because she saved him. Amelia was very pleased. Alicia was very angry that Amelia communicates with the corporal more than the others. While Edwina watches John from the window, Alicia and Emily flirt with him. John found it amusing. Martha approached John and asked how he was feeling. John assured her he's fine. Martha truly appreciates his willingness to help them. It seems John is recovering, and his leg will fully heal by the end of the week. This means he will have to leave in a few days. Martha advised the corporal to find a northern camp, but he doesn't want to leave and suggests staying here as a gardener. However, Martha made it clear that he doesn't belong here. Learning about this, the girls were very upset. Alicia suggested trying to please John in every way possible so that he would want to stay here at any cost. The girls also want to ask Martha for permission for the corporal to have dinner with them. Edwina entered John's room, who said he missed her. Edwina believes every word he says. Suddenly John confessed his love to Edwina, assuring her it's sincere. He also promised that they will be together now and kissed her. They were interrupted by Alicia, who came to invite the corporal to dinner. The news about dinner excited all the girls. Each of them wants to look irresistible to attract John's attention. During dinner, the girls giggled and flirted with John. He couldn't hide his smug smile. Seeing that Edwina's dress opened up her shoulders, Martha asked her to put on a shawl. Martha clearly disapproved of what was happening, but she didn't show it. Alicia, Edwina and the others continue to fervently vie for John's attention. He tries to please each of them. After dinner, Jane played the violin. Alicia didn't leave John's side. He flirted with both her and Edwina, whom he had promised to meet this night. When Martha offered brandy, John agreed without hesitation. The corporal constantly hinted that he wouldn't mind staying here with them. Martha merely snorted and announced that it was time for the evening prayer. After the prayer was over, Martha walked John to his room. He wanted to kiss her, but they were interrupted by the girls' voices. Excited, Martha left. At night, Edwina put on her best nightgown, put on perfume and brushed her hair. She was waiting for John, who promised to come. But he did not go to her. Edwina waited for him for a long time until she suddenly heard strange sounds coming from the adjacent room. Upon entering, Edwina caught John and Alicia. He tried to explain himself, but Edwina didn't want to hear anything, and in tears pushed John away. He fell down the stairs and lost consciousness. This woke up all the students in the boarding house. Many of them upon seeing John unconscious, burst into tears. Alicia lied that John had come to her room at night with bad intentions, and then Edwina appeared and pushed him away. Edwina couldn't bring herself to tell the truth. They moved John to a table. He suffered a serious leg injury. Martha said that gangrene would set in soon. According to her if they didn't take action, John wouldn't survive until morning. Martha remained composed, while Edwina cried. Martha began yelling at her and ordered her to bring everything they needed. For many days, Edwina sat by John's room. When he finally regained consciousness, he screamed. One of his legs was missing. In tears, Edwina repeated that they had no other choice. Martha in turn calmly said that they did it to save his life. But John doesn't believe a word, thinking Martha did it intentionally to get back at him. Throughout the day, cries and screams could be heard from John's room. 
Hearing this, the girls cried as well. Martha fears that if they let John go, he will bring the northern army here that will plunder the boarding house. Edwina came to John's door but couldn't bring herself to enter. The guilt wouldn't let her go. Unlike Edwina, Alicia wasn't afraid to come to John. She said she only wanted to allay Martha's suspicions about them. John wants only one thing, to get the key to the door. But Alicia clearly has no intention of helping him. He no longer interests her. Later, hearing footsteps outside the door, John asked Jane to come in. He wants Jane to persuade Martha to let him go. But now John elicits from Jane, as well as from others, only disgust. During lunch, Alicia said that she wants the corporal to leave because she's scared. Edwina hinted to Martha that Alicia is lying. Suddenly John, who was furious, came down from the second floor. He's convinced that Martha did this to him out of revenge because he chose Alicia over her. Martha ordered John to leave, but he declared that from now on, everything will be on his terms. Martha kept reassuring her frightened students all this time. When John left the kitchen, Martha instructed Amelia to take a blue scarf, go outside and tie it to the gate. Amelia did as Martha told her, but John noticed her, took the scarf and followed her. Martha and the others heard a scream. Telling Edwina and the girls to stay inside, Martha went in search of Amelia. John was furious. He realized that the blue scarf is a signal for the soldiers. Martha convinced John to be sensible and go with them into the house. John can't believe these women did this to him. This is worse than perishing on the battlefield. John trusted them, and instead, he got betrayal. Now the corporal intends to get even. When John finally went to his room, Edwina despite Martha's objections, followed him and barricaded the door. Edwina still loves John and believes him. A passion arose between them. Alicia and the other girls don't understand how Martha could allow this. In Alicia's opinion, Amelia made a huge mistake by bringing John here, even if it was out of good intentions. Martha said they have to get rid of John because it was dangerous to stay in the same house with him. Mary suggested picking poisonous mushrooms and preparing a special dinner for John. Martha thought it was a good idea and put Amelia in charge of it. As instructed by Martha, Amelia went to the woods and collected mushrooms while Martha prayed. Later, Alicia got dressed up for the special dinner, as did the other girls. Afterward, they set up a lavish dinner and invited John to join them as a gesture of reconciliation. Of course Edwina was unaware of their sinister plan. John didn't suspect anything wrong and decided to accept their apologies. Before starting the meal, Martha suggested a prayer. John politely asked Marie to pour him some wine. After that, Martha offered him a taste of the mushrooms. John intended to give some to Edwina as well, but Amelia reminded the teacher that she doesn't like mushrooms. John enjoyed the meal, unaware that it would be his last dinner. Edwina smiled, planning to leave together with her beloved soon. Suddenly John started feeling unwell. Seeing that Martha and the girls remained calm, Edwina realized in horror that they were behind all of this. John passed away. Martha took the student's hands. On the same evening, Amelia tied the blue scarf to the gate. Martha and the students prepare to erase John from the history of their boarding house forever. Edwina had nothing left but to accept. For all of them, it was a test of their will. After sunset, Martha and the others left lifeless John outside the gate. Now things in the boarding house would continue as before.